Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to have a beautiful vision lesson on linear programming. I know you have revised so many question papers and you now require final exam tips on how to score 100% in linear programming. There are three ways linear programming is examined. There are three options which I have listed below. Uh, on option A, they draw for you and ask you to find inequalities represented. And then on option B, they will just give you inequalities and ask you to represent them on the graph. And then lastly, they give you weight problems on inequality and ask you to interpret them mathematically and present inequalities on the graph. On all cases, please don't panic guys. Be ready to score all your marks. Usually option A and B are mainly examined in mid paper one. It is rare cases where I've seen option A and option B in mid paper two. In mid paper two, they are mainly interested in weight problems. They want you to be able to interpret, come up with your own inequalities and represent them on the graph. We'll go through all the three options today so that you'll be ready to answer linear programming in your final exams. We are going to start with number six. That was in May's paper two in November 2009. The question on linear programming was on number six B. We're supposed to use the graph to write down three inequalities other than three Y plus X is less than or equal to 21, which satisfy the region R. So these are the short notes that you should follow when they have drawn the graph for you. So first we are going to take N2 coordinates along the line. We want to start to interpret this inequality. So we are going to take N of the two coordinates along this line. So either we are going to take one, two, and this one is three, six. Make sure that when you are writing the coordinates, you start with the X coordinate and then you write the Y coordinate. So here I'm going to take this one in the X axis and then these two in the Y axis so that the coordinate is going to be one, two. And then I can take this two, four. It is two in the X axis and then four in the Y axis. So it implies that it is two, four, I can even take this point, which is 3 in the x-axis and 6 in the y-axis. Now that I have the coordinates, the next step is that we need to find the gradient. We are going to use n of the coordinates above. We want to go on to our second step, which is of finding the gradient. So you should know how to calculate the gradient. Gradient is change in Y over change in X. So let's say I use 1, 2 and 2, 4. The change in Y is going to be 4 minus 2 over 2 minus 1. If we say 4 minus 2, we get 2. 2 minus 1, we get 1. 2 divided by 1 we are going to get 2. So it means that our gradient is 2. After finding the gradient, the third step is to find the y-intercept. So the equation of line is y is equals to mx plus c, where m is the gradient, and then c is the y-intercept. We are going to take n of the coordinates above. Either we are going to use 1, 2, or 2, 4, or 3, 6 to substitute on y and x. Let's say we use 1, 2. 
our y is going to be 2 and then m which is our gradient is positive 2 and our x is 1 we want to find the value of c so we need to make c the subject of formula we are going to shift these two to this side it is going to be 2 minus 2 is equals to c so it implies that our c is equals to 0 now that we have find our um, y-intercept, we now need to write the equation of the line, which, are, which is our stage number 4. So we are going to say y is equals to, we obtained our gradient as 2, and then the value of um, c is 0. So it means that the equation of line is y is equals to 2x, since c is equals to 0. And then finally, we now need to write down the inequality. So we said the equation of this line is y is equals to 2x. Uh, we can see that the region that is shaded is above. So the region that we want is below. We are going to write y is less than or equal to 2x. So this is one of the inequalities that is defining the region arm. We want to do for another line again. We are going to do for this line. First, we want to write down the coordinates uh, that is found along this line. We are having one, two, and then three, zero. First, we want to calculate gradient. Gradient is change in Y over change in X. So we write, 2 minus 0 over 1 minus 3. 2 minus 0 is equals to 2. 1 minus 3 is equals to minus 2. 2 divided by negative 2, we are going to get our gradient is negative 1. And then um, the equation of line is y is equals to mx, where our m is negative 1, x plus c. We are going to take in of the coordinates above. Let's say we use this 3, 0. We are going to say 0 is equals to minus 3 times uh, minus 1 plus C. We want to make C the subject of formula. So we are going to shift this. So here we are having positive 3, since we are saying 3 times negative 1. So we are going to shift this minus 3 to this side. It is going to be positive 3 is equals to C. Now we need to write the equation of the line. It is Y is equals to negative X plus 3. So we obtained the equation of this line is y is equals to minus x plus 3. We now want to write down the inequality. Can you, can you see, guys, that the region that is below the line is shaded? This implies that the region that is wanted is greater than. So here we are going to write y is greater than or equal to minus x plus 3. If the line was broken, we're going to write strictly greater than. But in this case, we can see that the line is bold. So we are going to write y is greater than or equal to minus x plus 3. And then finally, we want to do the same for this line. We are going to write coordinates that are along this line. We are having 3, 0 and then 6, 5. We now need to find the gradient. We are going to say gradient is change in y over change in x. So we say 5 minus 0 over 6 minus 3. Here we are going to obtain 5 over 3. This is our gradient. Third step, we want to find the value of c, which is y-intercept. The equation of line is y is equals to mx plus c. We are going to take any of the coordinates above. Let's say we take these 3 and 0. We are saying 0 is equals to 
3 times what is our m our m is 5 over 3 plus c so we want to find the value of c this 3 is going to cancel this 3 so that our c is going to be negative 5 let us write uh, the equation of line it is going to be y is equals to our m we obtained 5 over 3 x and then our c is negative 5. we now need to write the inequality uh, let's see the, the region that is shaded they have shaded the region that is below so it means that the region that is greater than is the wanted region so we are going to say y is greater than or equal to 5 over 3x minus 5. This is how you find the inequalities that are represented on the graph. Uh, let me summarize. You just need to take in two coordinates along the line. You find the gradient. You find the y-intercept. You write the equation of the line. And then finally, you write down the inequality looking at the region that is shaded. If the region that is shaded is above the line, it means that the inequality is going to be less than. If the region that is wanted is, is greater than, they are going to shade the region that is below. And then on part two, you're supposed to be able to find the maximum or the minimum. In this case, they wanted you to find the maximum value of 5y minus x for integer values of x and y in R. So this is what you do, guys. We are going to take the coordinates of the wanted region, the corner points of the wanted region. For example, in this case, we are having this 1, 2, this 3, 6, this 6, 5, and then this 3, 0. We need to write them all down. So first I'm going to write 3, 6. I write 3, 6 here. And then secondly, I'm going to write this 6, 5. I'm going to write 6, 5 here. Third, I'm going to write this, uh, this one. It is 3, 0. And then finally, I'm going to write this one, two. We want to find the maximum value of 5y minus x. So I'm going to write 5y minus x. And then I substitute correctly. Here my y is 6 and my x is 3. If I say 5 times 6, I get 30. 30 minus 3 is equals to 27. And then next, I'm having 5 times y here is 5 minus x, which is 6. 25 minus 6 is equals to 19. And then next, I'm saying 5 times y, which is 0, minus 3. 5 minus 3 is equals to 2. And here I'm having 5, my y is 2, minus x, which is 1. It is going to be 9. The question is requiring us to find the maximum value of 5y minus x. So we are going to select this 27. If the question was asking about minimum, we're going to select this 2. But in this case, it is asking about maximum, so we are going to select 27 as our answer. We are done, guys, on option A, where they are going to draw for you. Next, we want to move on to option B, where they are going to ask you to draw from given inequalities. When they ask you to draw from given inequalities, make sure you follow the given scale. 
Uh, the steps are you need to ignore the inequality sign and repli replace it by equal sign. You draw the equation of line and label it. You shade the unwanted region and be able to find maximum and minimum. I'm going to use number 10B of June 2011 to explain option B. The question is reading, answer this part of the question on a sheet of graph paper using a scale of one centimeter to represent one unit on the x-axis and two centimeters to represent one unit on the y-axis. Draw x and y-axis for 0 to 14 and minus 3 to 5 for the y-axis. So we said on the, when they ask you to draw from given inequality, the first step is that you should make sure you follow the given scale. In this case, it was uh, one centimeter to represent one unit in the x-axis. So that is why we are having 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And then make sure that you label correctly x-axis. It is very important, guys for you to label your graph. And then in the y-axis, uh, the scale is two centimeters to represent one unit in the y-axis. So we are going to write from minus three to positive five, two centimeters representing uh, two units in the y-axis. So um, the question is reading, show by shading the unwanted regions the region which is defined by x is greater than or equal to 3. First, we are going to ignore the inequality sign, and then we replace it by equal sign, so that it is going to be x is equals to 3. We need to draw the line x is equals to 3 on our graph. Many candidates get confused here. You should understand it that if they are saying x is equals to 3, it is a vertical line that passes through x is equals to 3. So this is our 3, this is our x is equals to 3. So we are going to draw a vertical line that is going to pass through x is equals to 3. And then if they are asking you about y is equals to 3, know that it is going to be a horizontal line that passes through y is equals to 3. So in this case, uh, we need to draw x is equals to 3. It is very important, guys that, guys, that you need to label the line. This line is x is equals to 3. Make sure that you don't write x is greater than or equal to 3. You write x is equals to 3. The way we are going to shade the wanted region, the unwanted region, is the way that is going to explain if it is greater than or, or less than. So in this case, we want now to shade uh, the unwanted region. We are saying x is greater than or equal to 3. So it means that the region that is greater than x is equal to 3 is the one that is wanted. The region that is less than x is equals to 3 is unwanted, so we are going to shade it out. That is why we shaded this region out. By doing this, we have represented x is greater than or equal to 3 on the graph. Next, we want to present y is greater than or equal to negative 2 on our graph. So we are going to replace this inequality sign by an equal sign. So we write y is equals to negative 2. We want to present this equation of line on our graph. So as I said before, if it is y is equals to negative 2, it means that we need to draw a horizontal line 
that is going to pass through y is equals to minus 2. So this is the horizontal line. We are going to name it y is equals to negative 2. It is very important, guys, that you don't leave it unlabeled. And make sure that you don't write an inequality sign here. The region that we have shaded out is going to define if it is greater than or less than. So in this case, um, we are saying y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So it means that the region that is greater than is the one that we want. We are going to shade out the region that is below. That is why we have shaded this region out. By doing this, we have completed to represent y is less than or equal to negative 2. And then finally, we want to present x plus 2y is less than or equal to 8 on our graph. So in order to draw the line y, x plus 2y is less than or equal to 8, we need to create a table of values. So we are going to replace this sign by an equal sign. We say x plus 2y is equals to 8. Let's say our x is equals to 0. What is going to be the value of y? We are going to say 0 plus 2y is equals to 8. We need to make y the subject of formula, so we are going to divide both sides by 2 so that our y is going to be 4. So we are saying that if x is equals to 0, y is going to be equal to 4. And then we are going to find the value of x if y is equals to 0. So we say x plus 2y is equals to 8. x plus 2 times 0 is equals to 8. So it implies that our x is equals to 8. So when x is equals to 0, y is equals to 4. When x is equals to 8, y is going to be equal to 0. We want to plot these two points on our graph. So here the coordinate is 0, 4, and then here it is 8, 0. So we want to plot these points on our graph. So for we are having 0 form. We are saying 0 in the x-axis and 4 in the y-axis. It is this point. And then we are having 8 and 0. 8 in the x-axis and 0 in the y-axis. It is this point that we are going to plot. After that, we need to join the two points using a ruler. We are going to have this diagonal line. And then we need to label it x plus 2y is equal to 8. We are saying x plus 2y is less than or equal to 8. So it means the region that is greater is unwanted. So we are going to shade it out. We are going to shade this region that is above. So by doing that, we are going to come up with our wanted region as this triangle. And then in part two, from the region defined, find the coordinates of a point that gives a maximum value of 3x minus 2y. So what we need to do is we need to write down all the coordinates of the corner points of wanted region. So this is 3 in the x-axis and minus 2 in the y-axis. So we are going to write minus uh, 3 minus 2. And then this corner, it is 3 in the x-axis and then 2.5 in the y-axis. And then this one is 12 in the x-axis and minus 2 in the y-axis. So want to find the values of 3x minus 2y using these three coordinates and then compare in order to find the maximum. So we are going to say 3x minus 2y is 3 times 3 minus 2 times minus 2. And then here we are having 3 times 3 minus 2.5 
times 2. And then here we are having 3 times 12 minus 2 times negative 2. So here we are going to get 3 plus 9 plus 4, which is equals to 11. So 9 plus 4 is equals to 13 instead of 11, sorry. And then here we are having 9 minus 5, which is equals to 4. And then here we are having uh, 12 times 3 is equals to 36. 36 plus 4 is equals to 40. The question is reading from the region defined, find the coordinates of a point that gives a maximum value of 3x minus 2y. So we are going to take this coordinate, which is 12 minus 2. And then finally, we want to state the maximum value of 3x minus 2y. We are going to select 40 as our answer. So this is how we present our inequality when they ask us to draw from the given inequalities. This is how we present them on the graph. Now we now need to move on to the final option, which is the weight problem on inequalities. In Meds Paper 2, they are mainly interested in weight problems on inequality. I have seen a lot of questions on weight problems on inequality. Be able to interpret correctly and write down the inequalities and then follow all the steps provided in option B above. Be able to find the maximum and minimum using the graph. So we are going to look at the question that was in November 2010. It is reading. A builder wishes to build houses and flats on 6,000 square meters plot of land. The city council insists that there must be more than six houses and that there must be more flats than houses. Taking X to represent the number of houses and Y to represent the number of flats, write down two inequalities other than x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, which satisfy these conditions. It is very important, guys, that you check on the question uh, which value is representing x and which one is representing y. So in this case, uh, we are told that x is representing houses and then y is representing flats. We now want to interpret this inequality. It is said that the city council insists that there must be more than six houses. So it means that X should be strictly greater than six. By doing this, we have managed to come up with the first inequality. Next, we are told that there must be more flats than houses. So flats is represented by y. So it means y should be greater than x because uh, there must be more flats than houses. Let's move on to b. The builder allows 300 square meters for each flat and 400 square meters for each house. So the total land that we are having is 6,000 square meters. So it means that the number of flats and the number of houses should not exceed 6,000 square meters. They should be greater, they should be less than or equal to 6,000 square meters. So we are going to say 400 square meters times x plus 300 square meters times y should be less than or equal to 6,000 square meters. So we need to divide by the highest common factor. First, we are going to divide by 100. 
so that we are going to remain with um, 4x plus 3y is less than or equal to 6. So this is how we are going to interpret the weight problems on inequality. In the steps that we are going to follow here, we have done them in the option B. Uh, the point x, y represent x houses and y flats. So it means that we are going to put our houses in the x-axis and then the flats in the y-axis. Using a scale of 2 centimeters to represent 5 units on both axes, draw the graph of x and y axis for 0 to 20 in the x axis and 0 to 20 in the y axis. Make sure that you follow the scale. For example, here we are told that 2 centimeters should represent 5 units in the both axes. So that is why we have said 5, 10, 15, 20. And here in the y axis, it is also 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Make sure that you label the graph correctly. For example, here the x axis is representing houses, so we are going to write houses in the x axis. And then y axis is representing flats, we are going to write flats in the y axis. Then we need to put the inequalities on our graph. The first one is x is greater than 6. We are going to present x is equals to 6 on our graph. And then since it is greater than, it means that the region that is wanted is greater than. We are going to shade out the unwanted region, which is less than. That is why we have shaded this region. And also the line is going to be a broken line since it is strictly greater than 6. And then we are having uh, y is greater than 6. We need to draw the line which is named y is equals to 6. This is our y is equals to 6. We are saying when, five is, when x is equals to 5, y is also going to be equal to 5. When x is 15, y is going to be 15. When x is 20, y is equals to 20. So if we join all the coordinates, we are going to have this line and also it is broken since it is strictly greater than x. And then uh, on shading the unwanted and unwanted region, um, we are saying y is greater than x. So the region that is greater than is wanted. So we are going to shade out the region that is below so that we are going to shade this region. And then finally, we are having 4x plus 3y is equals to 6. We need to draw the table of values. We say if x is equals to 0, what is going to be the value of y? So if we say 4 times 0 plus 3y is equals to 6, this is going to give us 0. So we say 3y is equals to 6. We divide both sides by 3 so that our y is going to be equal to 20. So we are saying if x is equals to 0, y is equals to 20. And then we want to find the value of x when y is equals to 0. We are going to say 4x plus 3 times 0 is equals to 6. 4x is equals to 6. We divide both sides by 4 so that our x is going to be 15. So it means that when y is equals to 0, x is equals to 15. We need to plot these points on our graph. So 0 is in line with 20. This is where we obtained this. And then um, 15 is in line with 0. 15 in the x-axis and 0 in the y-axis. We are going to label this line 4x plus 3y is equals to 6. And then after that, uh, we are saying 4x plus 3y is less than or equal to 6. So it means that the region that is greater than is unwanted. 
we want the region that is below, so we are going to shade this region that is above. After this, we are going to come up with our wanted region, is our arm. In part D, we want to use the graph to find the maximum number of flats that can be built. The maximum number of flats that can be built, we are going to take the maximum value of y, which is this 12. And then we want to find the maximum number of houses that can be built. We are going to take the uh, corner region with the maximum number of x value, which is this point. It is uh, 8, so it means the maximum number of houses that can be built is 8. And then finally, we want to find the values of x and y which gives the maximum number of dwelling units. So we are going to try the corner points of the wanted region. Uh, here, this point, we are having it is 6, 6, this point. And this one is 6, 12. And then this one is 8, 8. So we are going to compare. If we say 6 plus 6, we are going to get 12. 6 plus 12, we get 18. 8 plus 8, we get 16. So the combination that is going to give us the maximum number of dwelling units is this one with 6, 12. So we are going to write 12 flats and 6 houses. Finally, on weight problems on inequality, we are going to work out the question that was in June 2008. It was on number 12. It is reading, answer the wall of this question on a single sheet of graph paper. Misty Wolle manufactures tables and chairs using softwood and hardwood. A table requires 5 meters of softwood and 3 meters of hardwood. A chair requires three meters of softwood and four meters of hardwood. Mr. Hove has 45 meters of softwood and 48 meters of hardwood. Let X be the number of tables made and Y be the number of chairs made. Using the above information, write down two inequalities other than X is greater than zero and y is greater than zero in x and y which satisfy these conditions x is representing tables and y is representing chairs mr hobby is 45 meters of softwood it means uh, the material used for tables and chairs should not exceed 45 meters the softwood material that we are going to use for tables and chairs should not exceed 45 meters. So it means for table, uh, a table requires 5 meters of softwood. So we are going to say 5 times x and then um, a chair requires 3 meters of softwood. 5 times 3y, this should not exceed 45 meters. So it should be less than or equal to 45 meters. This is how we are going to come up with our first inequality. And then Mr. Hove has 48 meters of hardwood. It means that the material used, the hardwood material that is going to be used for tables and chairs should not exceed 48 meters. So for table, we require 3 meters of hardwood. So we write 3 times x, and then uh, for chairs we require 4 meters of hardwood. So we write 4 times y. This should not exceed 48 meters, so it means that it should be less than or equal to 48. This is how we are going to come up with our second inequality and obtain all the four marks on part A. Let us move on to part B. In order for Mr. Wole to make a profit, you should manufacture more than two tables. Tables is represented by X, so he is supposed to manufacture more than two tables. 
we are going to write x is great is greater than two it is strictly greater than two and at least four chase if we are saying at least we mean that y is going to be greater than or equal to four you should understand at least and at most at least is greater than or equal to and then at most is less than or equal to by doing this we are now having six out of twelve let us move on to part c the point x y represent x table and y chase manufactured using a scale of two centimeters to represent two tables on the horizontal axis and two centimeters to represent two chairs on the vertical axis draw the axis from 0 to 16 for x axis and 0 to 16 for y axis we are supposed to indicate clearly by shading the unwanted regions the region in which x y should lie this is the first step guys make sure that you label correctly the y axis and the x axis we are going to put chairs in the y axis and tables in the x axis first we want to present x is greater than 2 on our graph so we are going to write x is equals to 2 we need to draw the line x is equals to 2 x is equals to 2 is a vertical line that passes through 2 so this is the first step we are going to draw a broken line and we label it x is equals to 2 and then we want to shade unwanted region we are saying x is greater than 2 so it means the region that is less than 2 is unwanted so we are going to shade this region out next i want to present y is greater than or equal to 4 on the graph so i'm going to draw the line y is equals to 4. i'm going to draw a bold line and then i label it y is equals to 4. so we are saying y is greater than or equal to 4. so it means the region that is less than is unwanted so we are going to shade this region out in order to present 5x plus 3y is equals to 45 we need to come up with a table of values let's say our x is equals to zero what is going to be the value of y it is going to be 3y is equals to 45 we divide both sides by 3 so that our y is going to be equal to 15. also want to find the value of x when y is equals to zero it is going to be 5x is equals to 45 we divide both sides by 5 so that our x is going to be 9 so we want to present uh want to plot 0 15 and then 9 0 on our graph so 0 15 we mean 0 in the x axis and then 15 in the y axis so here we are having 14 1 2 3 4 5 this is going to be our 15 this is our 15 our 0 15 and then we want to present 9 0 our 9 0 is this point we are going to join these two points using a ruler i will join you uh, using a bold line we should clearly label that this line is named 5x plus 3y is equals to 45. So we are saying 5x plus 3y is less than or equal to 45. So it means this region which is above is unwanted. We are going to shade it out. Finally, we want to present 3x plus 4y is equals to 48. We want to find the value of y when x is equals to 0. It is going to be 4y is equals to 48. So in order to make y the subject of formula, we are going to divide both sides by 4 
so that our y is going to be equal to 12. So it means that if x is equals to 0, y is equals to 12. And then we want to find the value of x when y is equals to 0. We are going to have 3x is equals to 48. We divide both sides by 3. 3 into 3, 1. x is equals to 3 into 4, it is 1, remainder 1. 3 into 18 is 6. So it means when x is equals to 16, y is going to be equal to 0. So we want to present 0, 12, and 16, 0 on our graph. So this is our 0, 12, and then this is our 16, 0. We are going to join these two points using a bold line. We are going to label, it is 3x plus 4y is equals to 48. So 3x plus 4y is less than or equal to 48. So it means the region that is greater than is going to be and to be shaded. So we need to shade this region that is above. This is going to be our wanted region, which have four corner points, this point, this point, this point, and this point. By doing this, you now have 10 out of 12. And then finally, we want to use the graph to write down all possible combinations which give the maximum number of tables in chase manufactured. We are going to try the corner points of the wanted region. So this is 2 in the x-axis and 4 in the y-axis. So it means 2 tables and 4 chairs. And then this corner point, uh, it is 4 chairs and 6 tables because we can't have 6 and a half tables. So we are going to write 6 tables and 4 chairs. So this combination, it is three tables and nine chairs. And then this corner point is two tables and 10 chairs. So we are going to say two plus four, we are going to get six. Six plus four, we get 10. Three plus nine, we get 12. And then two plus 10, we get 12. So the, uh, the possible combinations which are going to give us the maximum number of tables and chairs manufactured, we select this one and this one, which is three tables and nine chairs and two tables and ten chairs. This marks the end of our tutorial today on final exam tips on linear programming. Thank you so much for following me on this channel. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my videos. I love you all. This is Eve signing out.